so the physics around motion that we've done so far is mostly in a straight line or the motion could be in three dimension in which case the particle could be traveling in a curve now in a more scholarly way we say that this is translation motion or the language of physics defines this as translation motion in next few lessons what we'll study is rotational motion which is basically bodies rotating around a certain axis now there are several examples of motion in daily life that are rotational in nature like let's say a merry-go-round or a golf ball spinning about an axis or maybe even a car wheel which rotates around an axis but at the same time moves forward as well so there is translation motion also so this kind of motion is a combination of rotation motion and translation motion so before we go ahead and study rotational motion in greater detail let us familiarize ourselves with some very important terms that will form the foundation of the topic of rotation so first off is a term called rigid body so a rigid body is one that can rotate about an axis without its shape getting changed so an example could be a hard plastic uh, piece or an iron plate or maybe a metal sphere or maybe even the computer you're using unless uh, you rotate your computer so hard that the parts inside the computer get detached in which case the shape of that rigid body would have changed and what is definitely not a rigid body right from the word go is let's say a balloon filled with water or a piece of jelly that will change shape very quickly the moment they are rotated or for that matter given any kind of motion so consider this piece of plastic which is a rigid body lying on an xy plane so it looks more like a hybrid between a mango and a potato but bear with me and imagine this is a piece of plastic lying on an xy plane so this is your y axis and this is your x axis also imagine that it is being rotated around the origin and the axis of rotation is your z axis so you could also imagine that let us say there is a nail driven through the origin and this piece of plastic is being rotated with nail as the axis uh, another thing you could imagine over here to understand the topic better is that there is a red tape stuck on the rigid body like this and this tape would be kind of a reference line for us which will kind of mimic the motion of the rigid body so that if the rigid body moves by an angle theta so will this strip of tape so to start with let's assume it is at an angle theta with the horizontal axis and let us also imagine that it makes an arc s over here and let us say the length of this arc is s and the radius of this circle of which s is the arc and theta 1 is the angle is r so the first term we learn in this topic of rotation is something called angular position and we say that the angular position of this line at this point of time is at an angle theta 1 with the x axis which itself is considered as zero angular position so it's relative to x axis we also know from geometry that theta one or let's call it theta for the time being theta is equal to s upon r and here theta is in radians now also imagine that if this arc s is extended if we keep moving ahead and convert it into a circle the circumference of this circle would be 2 pi r and if we were to substitute the value of 2 pi r for s over here what you'll get is theta is equal to 2 pi r upon r which is equal to 2 pi so we can say that the 360 degree angle of a circle is equivalent to 2 pi radians what we can also say is that therefore one radian is equal to 57.3 degree so these are just some side calculations for understanding the topic a little better as we move ahead so what's important here to remember is that the angular position of the reference line at this time is theta 1 and as the body rotates the angular position would 
increase if it's moving in anti-clockwise direction and it'll reduce if it's moving in clockwise direction. What's also important to remember is that let's say the angular position keeps increasing and eventually it reaches this point so that it's at 2 pi radians. We do not reset the position of the strip to 0 degrees. So if this rigid body rotates one circle and continues to move and let's say it makes another circle, we say that the new position is 4 pi radians because it's completed two circles, so the new position is 4 pi radians. Now, as we move ahead, we can also draw an analogy with linear motion. So let's go ahead and make a small table over here in which on the left side we have rotation and on the right hand side we have linear motion. So let's see what is the equivalent of theta in linear motion. So if theta is to rotation or that's an angular position when we consider rotational motion, the equivalent linear motion would have x as the position of a particle at any given point of time. And you know that this x is the distance from the origin. We say theta is the angle that the reference line or the rigid body makes with the horizontal or the x-axis. x in linear motion is the distance from the origin of the particle. And the way in linear motion you can have a negative x or the positive x depending on whether the particle is on the right hand side of the origin or the left hand side of the origin. In rotational motion also we say that theta is positive as it moves anti-clockwise direction and it will be negative if it moves in clockwise direction. So the second important term we use often when dealing with rotation is angular displacement. So let us say that at time t1 the position of the reference line was theta1 and at time t2 let us say its new position is this so that the new angle is theta2. So the new angular position is theta2 and therefore we say that the change in angular position is delta theta or theta2 minus theta1 and this is what you call angular displacement. We can say that the angular displacement is nothing but delta theta which is equal to theta2 minus theta1 or the angular position of the body at time t2 minus the angular position of the body at time t1. What you would also notice is that the angular position of every particle on this rigid body would change by same angle as would the rigid body. So if the rigid body moved by angle delta theta, every particle on the body, let's say you have a particle over here, would also move by a similar angle delta theta. What you might also want to notice is that for anti-clockwise direction, the delta theta would be positive because theta 2 would be greater than theta 1, while if the movement is in clockwise direction, your delta theta would be negative. So let me go ahead and write this as well over here, that for anti-clockwise motion, delta theta would be greater than 0, while for clockwise direction movement, delta theta would be less than 0. So let's go ahead and explore what is the third most often used term while dealing with rotation and it is angular velocity. And angular velocity is nothing but the change in angular displacement divided by the time taken and it's often shown by the symbol omega. So omega average would equal to theta 2 minus theta 1 or the change in angular position divided by the time taken. So let's say theta 2 was at time t2 and theta 1 was at time t1, then the average angular velocity is equal to theta 2 minus theta 1 upon time, or this can be written as delta theta upon delta t. Now you've got to remember that this is average angular velocity between two distinct time intervals which are quite measurable. The difference of it is quite measurable. The instantaneous angular velocity would be given by w is equal to limit of delta t tending to 0 in the expression delta theta upon delta t. So what we are saying is that the delta t is becoming extremely small or what they say infinitesimally small so that there is very small delta theta movement and 
in that case that delta theta upon delta t would give the angular velocity at that point of time and this therefore converts to d theta upon dt what you will also see is that the angular velocity of every particle on this rigid body would be same so if the body itself has an angular velocity omega then every particle on this body would have similar angular velocity so we can again draw an analogy here with linear motion where we say that if in rotation omega is equal to delta theta upon delta t in linear motion we have instantaneous velocity v is equal to dx upon dt or the first derivative of x now let's move on to the fourth expression which is very often used in rotation and that is angular acceleration and angular acceleration is nothing but the change in angular velocity in divide by the time it takes to change so your average angular acceleration which is defined by the symbol alpha is equal to omega 2 minus omega 1 divided by the time taken which could be t2 minus t1 or this is equal to delta omega divided by delta t now once again you got to remember that this is the average angular acceleration because there, there is a distinct time interval delta t over here which is quite measurable so you are finding the average change in velocity over a certain period of time but if you were to find the angular acceleration at an instant what you will do is you will say angular acceleration at a point of time or instantaneous angular acceleration is equal to the limit of delta t tending to zero in the expression delta omega upon delta t which then equals d omega upon dt now once again we we can notice that the angular acceleration of every point on this rigid body would be similar and we could also draw a parallel with linear motion and we say that if alpha is equal to the angular acceleration at a point of time and is given as d omega upon dt the equivalent in linear uh, motion would be a is equal to dv upon dt or the first derivative of velocity but we also know that acceleration can be written as the second derivative of x and likewise in rotational motion also we can write that this is equal to d2 theta upon dt2 and in a couple of places you might find the expression theta with two dots on top so this is not some alien symbol it's just a short way of writing this and in linear motion also i have seen some people writing this as x double dot 